name's Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,950 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Hey everyone. So recently in response to the COVID-19 epidemic that's going on around the world, received a couple of user requirements that I thought that I would pass on to the rest of you. And it involves receiving an inordinate amount of notifications. And basically the objective was to cut down how many notifications are received by task fulfillers. So I'm gonna take you through two ways that we can leverage Flow Designer to make this happen. So the first one that we're gonna focus on, uh, I'm just using the problem form here. Uh, something's wrong with my incident form, so I stopped using it for right now because uh, there's just some, some issues there. So I think when I domain separated my, my instance, um, it blew some things up, so no big deal. Uh, the show must go on, as they say. So anyway, what we're looking at now is the, a problem record. It's a new record, hasn't been created just yet. Um, and basically what we want to do is instead of sending an email to the person they assigned to, uh, we'd like a connect chat um, to open up or at least populate with a number here, increase um, every time that a ticket is assigned to an individual. So I've already filled out the assignment group and my name right here. And when I hit save, what will happen is little number one will come up right here, this blue number one. And what this does is it adds me to a conversation and just tells me, uh, you know, basically that um, this is the, the record I need to look at because it's just been assigned to me, right? So that was the, the first thing that they wanted instead of having an email sent to them because this, this kind of saves time and going back and forth between email um, and the actual application. It keeps you in the platform um, is the main desired effect. And the second one was when they're mentioned in the notes. And some of you might already be aware that there's a notification that's sent out every time you mention someone. And what I mean by mention is I'm going to put in the at symbol and I'm going to type in my name. I'm going to find myself, Jason Miami Miller here, and I'm going to hit post. And that's going to add me to the activity log. But also you see the number one turns on right there. And it's just telling me that, hey, look, you got another one here, right? So um, it's basically telling me that someone had mentioned me um, in the activity log and that probably I should go take a look at it. So these are two ways that instead of um, having notifications, uh, you know, fly into someone's email box and they probably already have thousands there to look at on a daily basis, this is one way we could prevent that. So let's just go through the, the steps here that we took to implement that. So first off, I just wanted to mention that there is that activity stream at mention email and probably you'll you'll see these if you have this turned on out of the box. So all that means is that second part that I just did with mentioning the person, they will get a notification. Um, and basically, if you take a look at <clears throat> the where it's coming from, first off, is the live notification table. So it's not linked to the problem record at all or the specific record. So if we were to use the problem table to try to make this, um, it's not going to happen. So we have to go off of this table right here, which is live underscore notification. Uh, we'll look here at the advanced condition. Looks very complicated, right? So we're not even gonna mess with this. This is a way simpler solution than having to script all this stuff out. So even if you don't know how to script that well, um, I'll show you a real simple method for setting this up. So who's gonna receive? Basically the user in that field. And then what it's gonna contain is you've been mentioned. And this is just all the, the, you know, the standard out of the box stuff right here. So then we're gonna go to this table, which is live underscore notification. So we would type in live underscore notification dot list and that's going to bring up it's just going to reload this list right here right so as you can see here these are the two that um, i just uh, um, created and um, excuse me this is the last one that i just created uh, for the demo in terms of the mention the other one was coming strictly from the problem table um, as we'll see in the uh, flow designer in just a second um, one thing you might try to do is use this document ID field. The problem with this field, um, and I understand why they use it, they use it because not every 
notification or live notification is going to be in a table that comes from task. So what I had to do is set up this custom field called task. Um, and, and a couple of issues here with this is that like, if I were like, imagine we had thousands and thousands of these notifications going on a daily basis. If I try to just find the problems, it doesn't bring up anything. If I try to find the specific record number or even a portion of it, let's just try four, zero, three, what is that? Five, eight. It's not gonna find it. Whereas if we created our own like this, what was it four, zero, three, five, eight? It'll pull it up. See, that's, that's why you create this field partially. Um, the other reason is because we need to be able to dot walk because if we try to click inside this record and if we were to click on this, it would bring up this screen right here. It looks like a reference field. It has this little eye next to it. And you're like, wow, I can dot walk to it. Problem is that it's not a reference field. And the way we know that is that when we try to set up a business rule against it, um, and before I get to the business rule, um, I'll just show you the, uh, the field that I'd set up. So right here, I called it just task and it's U underscore task and it is a true reference. If we look at document ID, document ID is actually its own type and there's no real way to, to dot walk to it from condition builder at least. So if we go into our entry here, um, this is the one that I created, just a standard reference field and we're referencing the task table. There's no real reference qualifier or anything going on with it. Now, if we go to the actual business rule itself, one way that we know that document ID is not able to be dot walked is that it doesn't have these little arrows next to it. You see how here the task fields, if I want to kind of go into the fields off the task, we can do that. But with the document ID, we're not able to do that. So that's just one thing to note and, and why we had to create that. It actually makes it a lot easier for us. So I didn't put any conditions on this one because this is just you know a demo that I'm kind of showing you right here. It's not uh, off of real life conditions. But if you think about it, you could probably go off the task type, like if you only want to do it for incidents and say task type is incident or something like that. Um, and then we're going to go to our advanced. Really simple stuff here. See, we're going to lot leverage document ID or document is the, is the name of the or the value of the field. So I'm going to say basically, I want to make the task current.u underscore task equal to current.document dot sys ID. Remember this last part here. Dot sys, whenever you're dealing with reference fields and trying to get them to populate, um, if you just do this without the sys ID, uh, excuse me, this portion right here uh, probably won't populate. That's why you got to put in that dot sys ID. So make sure um, you do that if you set up this, this notification. And notice here that it's running off the live underscore notification table. So it's key, it's not running off the problem table um, for the mention portion of this. So let's take a look at our two flows here. So the first one, I just call it pro problem assessment or whatever. Uh, real simple stuff here, right? The problem's created, great. There's no real advanced options. I mean, if we wanted to, we could add some like filters, right? We could put in like, you know, um, priority is one or something like that. If we wanted to just have it on priority ones. And then here's what we're looking at. This is where the magic happens. So we're gonna, um, and I'll, I'll create another one just to show you. So action, we're gonna go down to connect. Then we're gonna add the user to a task conversation. And then we're gonna bring in these pills over here, right? So the first one we're gonna bring in is a problem record. And then we're gonna open up the problem record. We're gonna go down to assign two, and that's gonna be our user, right? Because this is referencing the user table. So I basically just set up the same thing. I'm gonna get rid of this. Let's hit delete, so that way we can see it right here. Fantastic. Now let's go to the one where I had to set up the business rule, excuse me, the business rule for the live notification table. So we'll notice here, notification created. So the trigger's created, right? And then we're gonna do here, table is live notification. And then after that, we're gonna say, add user to task conversation. Now, again, if we were try to, if we try to use the, the task, or excuse me, the document ID field, uh, we could open up the notification record here and we'll see here, see how document ID doesn't have like this little arrow next to it. That tells us it's not dot walkable, right? 
there's no reference to a table that's going on there. That's why I had to create this custom one right here to say, okay, task, here's what I want. I wanna bring you over here, and that's where I bring you. And then I would take the person in the assigned to field, excuse me, or the user um, off of the notification record. So what I would do is roll this up, and then I would just take the user over here and throw it over there. Um, and that's basically the way I would do it, right? So just take the task, throw it in here, and then again, the user is what we want over here. And that's what makes it work there. But just remember, you're gonna have to set up the custom field. So you're gonna have to be a developer to set up the custom field right here. Um, and then also uh, the, the business rule. Um, again, this isn't very complex, but the solution works. And also at the end of the day, it reduces the need to go back to uh, whatever email system you're using like Outlook or Gmail or whatever it is, you can stay 100% in the tool, still get the notifications and keep those task fulfillers um, pointed towards fulfilling tasks instead of you know going through emails and trying to triage them that way. So I think this is a pretty nice little solution here um, to meet that requirement. And that's it for today. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.